Let's get more insight into the campaigns, their fundraising efforts, why this is so important. And we're now joined by Joseph Williams. Joseph is a former senior editor at U.S. News and World Report. Good to see you again. Thanks for uh, taking time to chat with us. Yeah, good to see you again, Sean. Uh, okay, both campaigns are in the thick of fundraising efforts. Uh, people may be surprised that Biden was so successful at raising money in the month of June. Let's talk about the latest hauls. Uh, their, their war chests continue uh, to swell. Why is this important in $126 million in the month of June, $260 million overall, $330 million for Donald Trump? It sounds like a lot of money, but that can go pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it reminds me of a phrase I heard long ago from uh, the late Phil Graham, who was a Texas yep. uh, Republican yep. congressman, who said the best of a politician's best friend is ready money. And certainly in this election cycle, it's going to be the case because uh, people expect extra experts expect this election to cross the billion dollar threshold and already it's trending in that direction so money buys a lot of things for politicians it buys airtime it buys staff it buys field offices and in a close election like this field offices airtime and staff are going to be crucial because you want to get the ground game out you want to get people to the polls you want to have airtime to run ads and convince people of your narrative and frame the other guy in the way that you think would be most effective and helpful for your campaign. So it is surprising that Biden uh, raised so much money after such a horrible debate performance. And it also lends credence. I mean, that particular aspect lends credence to the fact that he wants to stay in the race. Certainly, he's got some donors who are anxious and who are nervous. Mm. But he's also got a lot of cash on hand that really makes a, a big, big difference and something that a late coming uh, Democratic candidate would not be able to do. Yeah, and uh, as I understand it, a new candidate would not have access to Biden's money. Is that true? Well, it's kind of complicated. I mean, the federal election laws are really kind of Byzantine in the United States. The short answer is yes, that's correct. But the longer answer is there probably is a way to get that money to Kamala yeah. Harris, particularly if she becomes the nominee if Biden steps away, most notably because she's also on the ticket. Yeah. But again, election law is very complicated. That's one of the things that's kind of troubling uh, Democrats about whether or not to replace Biden on the ticket is whether or not they're going to have access to the money that he's already raised and would they have to start from scratch with just four months until the general election. Okay, now aside from money, you have to have confidence. The voters need to be behind you. And look, a lot of well-heeled Democrats are right now saying, uh, Biden, you did as much for the country as you can. It's time to step aside. George Clooney, uh, the latest, and he certainly has a lot of people uh, that are going to listen to what he says. So what about these increasing calls for Biden to step aside? It's troubling for the Democrats. It's very problematic. I mean, the image I keep having is of a manager walking out to the mound, tapping his left arm to replace a pitcher, uh, only this pitcher still says he's got some gas left. And really, the manager has not come out to the mound. That would be in the form of Nancy Pelosi, Jim Clyburn, any other insiders from the uh, Democratic Party who are part of Biden's whispers, people who can convince him of something. Now, it is going to be kind of interesting to see how it goes forward. I've said it many times that in election cycles, four months is an eternity and a blink of an eye at the same time. A lot can happen between now and November, and right. Biden still has time to recover and frame his narrative. The problem for him is the margin of error is very, very, very thin. He cannot afford another mistake. He cannot afford another freeze up. And he's got to be pitch perfect for the next four months. No exception. Okay, he wasn't pitch perfect uh, Sunday when he had his discussion with George Stephanopoulos, a very popular uh, U.S. commentator here in the United States. And also, there's that blurb that somebody stopped Stephanopoulos on the street and said, How's Biden doing? And uncharacteristically, he answered and said, I don't think he has enough gas for four more years. That can't help Biden. No, it certainly can't. And the more this buzz starts to uh, circulate around the candidate, the less he's going to be able to recover. Now, politicians are unique. They can smell blood in the water, even if the blood is coming from your own leader of your own party. They don't, the down ballot Dems don't want to get dragged down. And this is another factor in campaign fundraising, because if people think that the candidate at the top of the ticket is not viable, mm. the lower ticket candidates are going to suffer in terms of fundraising. Nobody wants to back a loser. And very much George Clooney's uh, op-ed in The New York Times spoke volumes and rattled a lot of people. So the money train has to keep rolling, but Biden is the engine that makes it go. Yeah. If the uncertainty around him is any degree pitched higher, then it's going to be a big problem for him going forward. 
Okay, let's talk about uh, former President Donald Trump and his impact on fundraising. His legal battles, seemingly, his supporters are so rapidly behind him, no matter what he does, they're like, let's keep on raising money. Well, and Donald Trump has always been, from day one, the politician who defies political gravity. It doesn't seem to apply to him that a conviction, a criminal conviction, on top of two other high-profile cases that indicated that he was guilty of sexual assault, any other politician may be dead in the water. But Donald Trump has the charisma. He's got the believers. He's got people who are willing to open up their checkbooks. Now, one thing I might note is that Donald Trump's money comes a lot from large donors. Uh, the widow of, uh, Sheldon Red, of, of uh, Sheldon Redstone, the casino magnet, she's poured in a ton of money. He's got a lot of mega donors who, will, who are willing to kick in. And he's got his own fundraising apparatus on top of that. So I don't think money is going to be a huge problem. It seemed like it was going to be when he was on trial and Biden had an $100 million lead on Trump in terms of fundraising. That evaporated very quickly. And both of these politicians have had fundraising halls that really make no sense in a larger political scheme. And back on planet Earth, where we used to reside, this would not even be close to happening. <laughs> okay, the GOP, uh, all the faithful are going to be in Milwaukee next week for the big national convention. Um, your thoughts on who you think we're going to see for the VB pick, and also Project 2025 versus the party platform, because anybody that's read the, what, hundreds of pages in Project 2025, it's, there's some stuff in there people find very scary. Well, very scary indeed, and that's one of the reasons why Donald Trump is kind of backing away from it. Uh, the Republican platform doesn't even mention any of the initiatives there in Project 2025. It doesn't talk about abortion. It doesn't talk about eliminating the Department of Education. It leaves all that stuff behind because Republicans know they're going to be in a primetime spotlight. However, the Democratic Party, if they're smart, would take this plan and keep slapping Donald Trump upside the head at every turn. Uh, they haven't done that yet because they're still working through a lot of their angst about Joe Biden. And a lot of that angst will not go away until the Republicans take center stage right. on uh, uh, starting next week for their convention. And even then, it still may simmer down but just be rolling under the surface. Okay, quickly, so Biden, VP pick. Obviously, I'm sorry? Uh, quickly, VP pick. Who do you think? Uh, VP pick is wide open. Nobody knows. Anybody who says they do know is probably fooling themselves. Trump is a capricious guy. He'll pick on instinct. And that instinct, we know not to predict.